Imagine you wake up from a deep sleep and you can't move or speak. Your body's completely paralyzed. WTF is going on. Hey guys, I'm Lacey Green and this is D News. You might have hallucinations during your paralysis where you see a threatening presence on top of you or beside your bed. There's a crushing sensation in your chest, like you can't breathe. You might feel like you're floating above your body and looking down on yourself or that you're hurling quickly through a long, dark tunnel. Sounds terrifying, right? This phenomenon is called sleep paralysis and it'll happen to half of us at least once in our lifetime. Our D News producer, Pam, has actually had it happen to her. Check this out. So I I have been experiencing sleep paralysis probably since I was about 11 or 12, and I still get it to this day, although it doesn't happen very often. When it does, it's a really unsettling feeling. I will be conscious, my mind is awake, but I literally cannot move any part of my body. It, it freaks me out. It used to freak me out a lot more when I was younger, but now what happens is eventually I can, you know, like move a finger, I'll like move my arm, and then eventually I can move my whole body to get out of it. I don't like it. It's really weird. Naturally, something like this occurs and people are like, what the heck just happened? That was not cool. In the past, supernatural explanations were pretty common. You know, the evil spirits always stirring things up. The Chinese call it gui ya, which means ghost pressure, and they believed that a ghost would sit on the sleeping person. Europeans interpret it as abductions by a witch who would assault you and force you to take a fast ride on a broomstick. In the West Indies, it was called kokma, which referred to a ghost baby who would jump on you and attack your throat. And four million Americans, to this day, believe it to be an alien abduction in their sleep, which I haven't been abducted by aliens myself, but if I was, I'd probably be a little creeped out, stressed, definitely confused. A study recently published in the Clinical Psychological Science Journal found that the aftermath of being paralyzed in your sleep can be really scary and traumatic, but that it's infinitely less stressful when patients have a scientific understanding of why it happened. Science is therapy, y'all. Instead of living your life thinking you've survived an alien abduction, you can relax knowing that basically your mind and body were momentarily out of sync and that it happens to a lot of people. During REM sleep, the most dream-filled part of sleep where the brain's really active, our muscles become paralyzed by by two chemicals, glycine and GABA. This muscle paralysis is important because while you're dreaming, you might be fighting off dragons or running off a cliff. And I'm just guessing here, but you probably don't want your body acting that out. Sleep paralysis then happens when you wake up and the glycine and GABA are still being released. Cue paralysis and hallucinations and general freakiness. Sleep paralysis is most likely to occur when you fall asleep really fast, you skip the stages of non-REM sleep that are supposed to happen first. It's also more likely to happen if you fall asleep on your back, if you're feeling stressed, if your normal sleep patterns are out of whack. The good news is that even though it's frightening, it's never dangerous and it only lasts a few moments. So sleep easy, my friends. So guys, in the comments below, let me know, have you ever experienced sleep paralysis? And if you have, what was it like? I'll be reading your thoughts and we'll be back with more D News soon.